Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today marks a day that we've kind of all been waiting for. We have the launch of the Z390 chipset from Intel and along with that comes a whole new host of motherboards. As you can see next to me, I've got one that, well, is pretty much a tiny little powerhouse. So we've got the Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX AC. Now I'm a massive fan of ITX motherboards because they seem to harness quite a lot of power, quite a lot of features in, well, as you can see, a very small package. So uh, let's jump in and take a look and firstly talk through the features and then let's have a look at how it performs and of course how well it overclocks. So before we jump into the motherboard let's look at what's inside the box. Firstly there is a quick installation guide, a software setup guide, a driver CD and case badge sticker, an ASRock postcard, an IO shield plate with Phantom Gaming branding, two M.2 screws for holding the M.2 modules down, two SATA cables, one of which is right angled, and of course, because this is an AC model, it includes a Wi-Fi antenna. So now looking at the board, obviously as an ITX board, the Phantom Gaming ITX AC is, as you'd expect, compact, but without compromising on features. It's finished in a matte black with nice chunky heat sinks, and it looks nice and not garish at all considering it is a gaming motherboard. High density glass fabric design makes the board extra resistant to humidity by reducing the gaps between PCB layers. The lighting is subtle with the board sporting just three RGB LEDs at the bottom. These are actually on the underside of the board and as usual can be controlled through ASRock's polychrome RGB lighting software, offering a multitude of different patterns. In terms of the CPU socket, both older 8th gen and the newer 9th gen Intel processors are supported by the 1151 socket. And the Phantom Gaming ITX AC uses a seven phase digital power design. We have the premium 60 amp power chokes and the Nichicon 12K black capacitors that are very much favored by ASRock. The chokes provide improved V-core voltage while the capacitors are designed to boost the lifespan of the board. ASRock are also advertising their Dr. Moss design with this board, which to quote the website, features smart power technology for monitoring the current and temperature of each phase, thus delivering smoother and neater power to the CPU. Other than the obvious 24 pin connector, this board also uses a single eight pin for power delivery. In terms of heat sinks, this board has two of them that are connected via a single heat pipe. One over the IO panel to divert away from the CPU power chokes and another acting as an M.2 heatsink, providing full coverage of this area. Both of these are nicely solid and chunky and do the job very well. Memory support, we have two DIMM slots in total, supporting DDR4 memory modules with speeds of up to 4,500 megahertz plus and a total maximum capacity of 32 gigabyte. This of course also supports Intel XMP 2.0. Looking at some of the fan headers and other headers that are actually on the board, we have two fan headers for the CPU, one of which is marked CPU optional, which is intended for a situation where multiple CPU fans are used at once. Only one more fan header is present in the top left of the board for system fans. The CPU optional fan also includes support for water pumps by providing up to two amps of maximum power and variable voltage control. This is especially handy when wanting to increase the longevity of your pump while also keeping noise to a minimum and in keeping the performance to its maximum. There is a single USB 3.1 Gen 1 header on the right of the board near the 24 pin connector and a single USB 2.0 header on the bottom left. Apart from the ordinary front panel connectors and also the HD audio connectors, as well as a chassis intrusion header, there's nothing really out of the ordinary on this board. In terms of lighting, there is a single standard RGB LED header and also an addressable RGB LED header. For your storage needs, there are four SATA 3 connectors, which also support RAID 0, 1, 5, 10, and also IRST. In terms of M.2 sockets, there are two on this motherboard, both supporting SATA and PCI Express based modules. One accepts type 2260 and 2280 type modules, and this one is covered by the heatsink on the front of the board, while the second socket only supports type 2280 and is situated on the underside of the board. Being Z390 based, the board does also support Intel Optane modules. Now it's actually quite common for mini ITX motherboards to have that socket on the back of the board and I actually really welcome this because in my eyes, out of sight, out of mind, but you're still going to get some fantastic performance. 
On this board, being Mini ITX, there is only a single expansion slot. This is PCI Express 3.0 X16. It incorporates the steel armoring that ASRock often use on their PCI Express slots. Moving around to the rear I.O., starting from the left, we have a clear CMOS button, two antenna ports for the built-in Wi-Fi module, and it's worth bearing in mind that this uses the Intel 2T2R dual-band 802.11ac Wi-Fi standard, and also utilizes Bluetooth version 5.0 technology. Next to the antenna ports, we have a PS2 mouse keyboard combo port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, a DisplayPort 1.2 port, a HDMI port, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, and an Intel Thunderbolt 3 port. There is also an RJ45 Ethernet port, which uses the Intel i1219V controller and supports gigabit speeds. Now fully integrated into the Z390 chipset, we also have two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, and finally the usual five HD audio jacks, along with an optical SB diff port. As per usual, ASRock provides 7.1 channel HD audio using the Realtek ALC1220 audio codec. Their Purity Sound 4 technology, under which they group both their audio hardware and software, provides us with Nichicon Fine Gold series capacitors, 120 decibel SNR DAC, individual PCB layers for both left and right audio channels, and an NE5532 premium headset amplifier for the front panel audio connector. Purity Sound 4 also ensures protection from interference via PCB isolating shielding. In common with the rest of the Phantom Gaming series, 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound is available through the Sound Blaster Cinema 5 software. So now that we've talked through all of the main features of the board and the design, and I'm sure you agree, it does actually pack quite a punch, but what's it like when it comes to the performance? Well, firstly, we wanted to look at the overclocking. So this is exactly what we did. When overclocking on the Z390 Phantom Gaming ITX AC, we was a little bit apprehensive about how far we could push it due to it being a mini ITX motherboard. Luckily, we were able to get it to five gigahertz, but we did have to increase the voltage to around 1.375 volts. We did try at 1.35, but sadly, it just wasn't as stable as what we'd like. There may be a sweet sort of middle spot between the two, 1.35 and 1.375, but that would take a little bit more tinkering and would depend on a lot of factors, including your cooler, ambient temperature, and how clean the power and the voltage is going to the CPU. So now that overclocking's out of the way and we've seen how far we can actually push the board, we wanted to see how the results fared when it came to the stock performance on the i9-9900K and also the overclock performance. So what we actually did is we paired it up with a 1080 Ti Founders Edition graphics card and some DDR4 3000 megahertz memory. So let's jump in and take a look at those glorious benchmarks. So I'm sure you agree that this board has a lot of features, especially for the size and the form factor that it utilizes. It looks pretty good and it does tick all the right boxes. So looking at pricing in the UK, this is currently retailing for 200 pounds. In America, it's 190 US dollars plus taxes. So with that, I actually think it's a pretty good deal. And when we've actually looked at the retailers, this is available for the same price as the Z370 equivalent. So if you are actually in the market for a board like this, you'd be kind of stupid to go for the Z370 version over the Z390. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Are you a fan of mini ITX motherboards? Is this the sort of one that you'd go after? 
Me personally, I think it does tick all the right boxes. There you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to subscribe and click that little bell icon. Give us a thumbs up and a comment below. And be sure to check out all of our other videos and also a full written review of this as well, which we will link to. I'll see you in the next video and see you later. Bye.